Hi, and welcome to my Tesla update video. This one's gonna be a little bit different than the normal ones that I do. I'm gonna be covering a few of the updates that have been happening recently. They've been fairly minor, so let's get started. You may have received at least one or two of these letters that are recalls that were initiated by the NHTSA or NHTSA. Uh, this one is about the autopilot and auto steer functionality. There is also another one on the telltale symbols that are on the screen. They have been enlarged. That's something you've probably seen recently. So let's get started. Just yesterday, I received the update 2024.2.7. And when you look at the screen, it just shows minor fixes. There are some other things that have occurred, so I'll be talking about those. But in the meantime, in the previous update, which I never got, I might as well cover that as well. 2024.2.6, the first item is supercharging in cold weather. So it says, if you're heading to a charger in colder conditions, use the vehicle navigation to route there. In addition to preparing the battery, this now automatically starts warming the charge port inlet. Then it has other tips for charging in cold weather. When you plug in, clear away ice and other debris from your charging cable connector and charge port and check that they're fully connected. When you unplug, after charging in frozen conditions, if you can't unplug, try warming the charge port inlet. In the Tesla app, you can turn on defrost car or in the car, turn on the rear defrost. Alternatively, you can prepare ahead of time. In the Tesla app, go to Schedule Departure, or in the Vehicle Settings, go to Charging, Schedule, Settings, Preconditioning. If warming alone is unsuccessful, you can pull the manual release in the trunk to disengage the charge port latch. See your owner's manual for sections on cold weather best practices and charging. Next up, we have Estimated Battery Range Update. Your estimated battery range now incorporates additional characteristics related to battery aging over time. So what this means, it's accounting for battery degradation, which is a natural part of the aging of the lithium ion batteries that are in the vehicle. And that's it for 2024.2.6. The previous update to that is 2024.2.3. The first item in that one is reminder to plug in at home. You will now receive a reminder on your phone to plug in your vehicle when you park at home with less than half your charge limit. To receive this notification, you must have your home location set and have charged there previously. Your vehicle's location is not shared with Tesla. See tesla.com slash privacy. Next, we have security improvements. This update includes important security fixes and improvements. I couldn't find anything listed in detail online about this, so I just assume it's doing what it says. Same thing with the previous update. We have a 2024.2. It also had security improvements. Now, the one that uh, was part of the recall is 2023.44.30.14, which is uh, the last update for 2023. If I click on that, over-the-air recall, telltale text size. As a remedy for the U.S. recall 24V-051, this update to your vehicle software increases the text size of the three telltales. You can see that the telltales are the icons that are on the left of the screen. When you start up, they all turn on, then they gradually turn off as the system starts up. After installing this vehicle software update, you don't need to take any further action for this recall. So basically, the text size of these icons are slightly larger than before, making them a little bit easier to see. Not really that big a deal. On this update that I just received, 2024.2.7, there are a few things that are listed that I did not see listed on my car. It's hard to say if that's due to me having a hardware 2.5 vehicle 
which has the older CPU. All the refreshed and new Model 3, Model Y have more updates than I do in my car because my car is going to be approaching six years old and that's going to be on May. So my car is not showing everything that owners of new vehicles will be seeing. I'll just list these right now so you're aware of them. The first thing I see on here is time until charging starts. When you arrive and plug in, if your battery vehicle is not warmed up enough, you'll now see how long it will be until DC fast charging starts. And I'm taking it that that is when you're at a supercharger or a CCS station. Next, we have ultra wideband phone key. And this is applicable to all the new models of S, 3, and X. Ultra wide band technology is now available for phone key. So your vehicle and phone key can communicate with greater accuracy to more responsibly lock, unlock, and open automatic doors. In the Tesla app, choose phone key upgrade and follow the instructions. After setup, keep your iPhone settings for nearby interactions on for Tesla. This requires iPhone 11 or newer and the Tesla app 4.29.5 or newer. Next we have adaptive high beams, which is also a feature of the new Model 3. The high beams now adjust to reduce glare for other drivers and cyclists by detecting other road users and selectively dimming individual pixels of the headlights, the high beams can remain on longer, enabling better visibility at night. To turn it on, go to lighting, adaptive high beam in your vehicle settings. Also to note, this edition is currently only for the new Model 3 and does not add support for matrix headlights on other vehicles. Next thing we have is more efficient charging. If you have a newer vehicles with the 4680 battery cells, your vehicle now adjusts to the power level of each DC charging station. So battery preconditioning when you're navigating to a charger and then charging can be more efficient. We have several undocumented features that are listed. First is the unlock button. To make it easier to unlock the vehicle for others, Tesla has added a contextual unlock button that appears in certain situations. If the vehicle is locked and there is someone inside the vehicle, an unlock vehicle button will now appear when somebody tries to open the vehicle from the outside. I think this is a great safety feature and I'm glad they've included this. Next, we have a trips menu redesign. Let me go into trips menu right now. And yes, it definitely looks different. So what they've changed is the show in trips card, which you can click on down here and go to, yep, there is the card there. So it says the show in trips card is now aligned right on the same row, allowing all trip meters to fit on the screen without having to scroll. So now you can fit everything on here, which is pretty cool. Each trip meter is now easier to read at a glance as well. The details for each trip meter are now grouped in a darker gray color, as you can see right here. Next thing we have is supercharging tips. In the charging menu, Tesla provides various tips when supercharging, such as not taking up adjacent stalls since some superchargers share power between neighboring stalls. This is great for V2 superchargers where the stalls, the A and B stalls, a lot of times are next to each other, sometimes not. And if you charge at one of them and somebody comes next to you, their charging is gonna be half the speed. So this is great that they're informing people that the older V2 charging has this issue. Of course, V3 and V4 superchargers have individual stalls that have individual power to them and they're not affected by any of the stalls around them. Another tip has been added. Tesla states that water vapor coming out of the car while supercharging in cold conditions is normal. 
Recently, some owners have been confusing the steam that is emitted from the vehicle for smoke. Supercharging tips can be accessed by going into controls, charging, and then tapping on supercharger tips. So right on the bottom here, that's all listed now. As you can see, it actually has some more things that I didn't even mention. So it has um, find the fastest supercharger, navigate to supercharger, arrive with 20% battery or less to maximize charge rates, leave space between cars, as I mentioned, and move your vehicle after charging, idle fees may apply. This is definitely a good thing that they've added, especially for newer owners that are not aware of these issues while they are at a supercharger. Next thing we have is pin to drive. The pin to drive keypad that appears when you enter the car has seen some minor design changes. So let's see if I go to press the brake, pin to drive shows up right here. I'll enter my four digit pin and then I have access to the vehicle. Honestly, I don't see much of a difference from the previous one, but in any case, there it is. Let's exit that. Next thing we have is the all apps menu will now display all apps available even if they're docked at the bottom of the display. Previously, the menu would only display apps that weren't pinned as favorites. So if I click on that right now, it's the uh, button at the bottom here with the three dots. And now you will see all of the apps are included on here. I find that it's nice to adjust the defrost and seat heater uh, during the winter. I'll have these down and then during the summer, I'll remove them and put them back up since I don't need them that time of year. Next thing we have is additional vehicle information. The additional vehicle info menu is under controls. Go to controls, software, additional vehicle information right there. Software will now display if your vehicle is capable of a third party next DC charging, which is going to be rolled out by the large charging networks such as Electrify America and EVgo. A lot of them will be having Tesla NAX ports in addition to the CCS1 ports on their charging stations. And as you can see on here, I have CCS and third party NAX DC charging is enabled. I did a update on my car to add CCS about, oh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, now I can charge at any charging station, which is a great thing. Next thing we have with this update, the vehicle software version displayed in the app will also display additional information. Tesla recently added the software version hash to the software version at the bottom of the app. And with this update, they're also displaying the vehicle software version number, such as 11.1 .1 as part of the version field. All right, that's about it for the updates that I have seen and read about for this latest update of 2024.2.7. If you know of anything else that I may have missed, please let me know in the comments down below. And also let me know how you think about this new format of doing updates. I like to get very involved in details on these updates so that you are better prepared when you get these updates. A lot of times I don't get these updates as soon as other people. I have my software set. I'll have this noted right here. If you go into software and then software update preference, you can do standard or advanced. When you set for standard updates, you will regularly receive over the air software updates and new features. But when you select advanced, then you'll receive these updates as soon as they become available for your configuration. And note that the latest software version will vary based on vehicle configurations, including hardware and geography. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, since I have an older car, I don't get the updates as early as I used to. 
which is kind of a hassle because I like to get these videos out to you when updates arrive so you're prepared for them. However, being an older car, I think I've been bumped to the end of the line as far as updates go. So I think they're uh, trying to give me a hint to buy a new Tesla, but I just bought another car, so it's going to be a little while before I buy a new Tesla. And with that, I think I covered everything I want to talk about today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.